of the day five eight. So we're going to start in our division box where it says fill in the equation below five eight equals something divided by something. So just as a reminder, five would be our numerator, the part over our denominator, the whole. So we can think of this as our part and the denominator is the total whole, how much one is split into. So this line is actually a division line and we're setting ourselves up for fifth and sixth grade math by recognizing that five eighths is the same thing as five divided by eight. So if you were to put five divided by eight in your calculator, you would get the decimal point six two five or six hundred twenty five thousandths. And in fifth and sixth grade, you will learn how to actually compute that longhand. But what we do know is that this is just a division problem. So the part five divided by the whole eight, so five divided by eight. So multiplication box over here, back when we first learned about multiplication in second grade, we thought of it as a repeated addition equation for whole numbers. And so we're going to write a repeated addition equation for our fraction five eighths and then we're going to use that equation to make a multiplication equation. So if you haven't already done this, you're going to want to pause the video now and try to do it yourself first and then play back what um, I do to see if you did it right. So just a reminder that 5 eighths when we add fractions, we're just adding the numerators and then the eighth is just the size, so that would stay the same. So something plus something plus something plus something plus something equals 5 eighths. It's all the same number, right? Repeated addition, so that would be 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth would be our repeated addition sentence. So one plus one plus one plus one plus one, plus one equals five in the size eights. How many of the, well we have one, two, three, four, five groups of one eight. So that multiplication, five whole groups, right? We could think of this as one group, two groups, three groups, four groups, five groups of one eighth. So five times one eighth equals five eighths. Now we're going to move on to the compare box. So again, if you haven't done this yet, pause the video. Attempt your comparisons are greater than, less than, or equal to, and then play the video to see how you did. So on 5 eighths versus 1 third, I can use the strategy of knowing where it is between our benchmarks 0, a half, and 1. So when I look at 5 eighths, I know that 4 eighths would be equal to a half since 4 is half of 8. That means 5 eighths would be somewhere to the right of a half. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's where I would estimate 5 eighths to be. So 1 third, when I'm thinking about money, if I had $3 and I gave half of my money to my children, I would be giving them $1.50 or one and a half dollars. So since our numerator 1 is less than that one that halfway point one and a half, then a third is somewhere to the left of a half, somewhere I can estimate about here. It doesn't have to be perfect, I'm just estimating. But what that does help me to understand is that five eighths is above a half and one third is less than a half, therefore five eighths is greater than one third. When I am comparing five eighths and five six, since they have the same numerator, I'm looking for the size piece that is a larger size piece. So when I take the whole and I break it up, 
I either am gonna break it up into eight equal pieces or six equal pieces. So thinking about a pot of gold, would you rather share that with eight total people or six total people? So you'd probably rather share that with six total people because then you get a bigger piece of that pot of gold. So since this is a large, one six is larger than one eighth, then five of those would be larger than five of something that's smaller than it. So five eighths would be less than five six. <clears throat> now we're going to move on to the equivalencies box. So this first one is our fraction five eighths. If you haven't already done this box, go ahead and pause the video and then come back to it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start five eighths in with a line in the middle. I'm going to have a total of seven lines to make eight equal pieces. And I'm going to start with my first line. That's not really in the middle, so I'm going to move it. That's what's great about a pencil. OK, and I'm going to put that same line all the way down. So I want to make sure since I'm trying to show equivalencies that all of these are at the same spot. And then I'm going to do a line in the middle to the left and a line in the middle to the right. I now have four equal pieces with three lines. And then I'm going to half each of those because if I double each of these, then I will have eight pieces. So that's a total of seven lines to make eight pieces. And I want to put the lines in the same place for all of them because we can't have it perfect with if we're just using our eyes. If we're not using a ruler, therefore I want to be able to show equivalencies with imperfect models. So I need to make sure that even though they aren't perfect, that this one eighth piece is the same as this one eighth piece is the same as this one eighth piece. Right, so I have five. Each of these are one eighth, right? One out of eight pieces. And if I'm showing five eighths, then I would highlight five of those one eighth pieces. So here is one, two, three, four, So now I need to show two more fractions that are the exact same size. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight the exact same amount since they are the exact same five eighths in total. And since it's a um, five here and an eight here, I can't make group five and eight, you know, make equal groups of two for example, because this group right here would only be half full because it's five. So we're only going to really be able to multiply these into more pieces. So I need to make sure that they're equal size pieces, which means that if I multiply this first piece into two, then it's not the same size as the rest of them. So I need to multiply all of them into two. And so what I've done is I've taken five eighths and I've multiplied it by the um, two over two or the whole number one, anything times one is just itself. And I end up with 10 16 So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 shaded out of 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So in the next one, instead of multiplying them into two, pieces by one line, I can make them three pieces by adding two lines. So I'm going to add two lines into each one eighth piece and that's going to make 24 total equally sized pieces where 15 of them are highlighted. So this would be like 1 16th and this is 1 24th. But at this point, we have 5 eighths, 10 sixteenths, and 15 24ths covering the same amount in our model. Moving on to adding and subtracting. 
Remember that our denominator is just our size and the size does not change. So it's easier to think if we're thinking in money. You know, if I had five quarters plus one more quarter, I'm not going to have six dimes. I'm going to have six quarters at the end. So I'm really just adding the numerators and then the denominator stays the exact same number. So this one would be six eighths. This would be 5 plus 5 is 10 in the size 8. So 10 eighths would be my answer there. And we'll get back to those 10 eighths here in just a second. This one is subtraction, so it's the same thing. So if you're thinking in money again, if I had 5 quarters and I gave 2 quarters away, I would be left with 3 quarters. So this time we're talking about eighths. So if I have 5 eighths and I subtract 2 of those eighths, I'm going to be left with 3 Eight. So this is just our size. So that eight does not change. It just gets moved over. And five minus two is three. For an improper fraction like ten eighths, we can also write that as one whole and two more eighths, right? Knowing that um, if I took this ten eighths, that would be the same thing as eight eighths, which is that one whole, plus two more eight since eight and two make 10. That should be review for most of us. All right, we are now on to the last one, writing 8,500ths a decimal in tenths and hundredths. So this really gets at our decimal place values, knowing that this is our ones place value, and then we have the decimal. This is our tenths with a th place value, and this is our hundredths place value. And what's nice about this is we have money that helps us to understand that like a hundred pennies, right, make one hole and ten dimes make one hole. So this would be like how many dimes do we have would be our tenths and how many pennies do we have would be our hundredths. So for the easiest one, we can just look how many tenths in the tenths place, that's eight, so I could have eight dimes. How many pennies in the hundredths place? Five. And eight dimes would be 80 cents, and five pennies would be five cents, and together they would make that 85 cents, or 85 hundredths. Now these two, we're gonna have lots of different ways that we could do this, I'm just gonna do two examples. So let's say that instead I just had one dime. Well, how much pennies is one dime worth? 10. So this is the same thing as 10 hundredths for 10 pennies. So that's something we need to understand. I'm not going to add 84 pennies to my one dime and have 85 cents. No, I'd have 94 cents. So I'm going to add 75 cents to my one dime because my one dime is worth 10 cents, and 10 cents plus 75 cents would be that 85 hundredths. And we can really just do this a whole bunch of different ways. So another example is if I had five dimes, that would be the same thing as 50 pennies or 50 hundredths. And therefore I would add another 35 pennies to get to 85 cents or 85 hundredths. So recognize that there's lots of different answers that could be here. All right, thank you.